attention for just a moment. I know we're still eating, but we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Steve Walker. Uh, I'm Run Rally Strong, um, an organization that uh, has been trying to help out after the tornado. And uh, this is this is our event. I hope you all enjoy yourself. I'm not up here to say very much other than I want to introduce the MC for the evening, and that's Todd Gottel. He's the mayor of Rowlett. He has earned the reputation as Bat Mayor because he was always there whenever anyone needed him throughout all of this aftermath. But Todd has uh, resigned as mayor to go run for Dallas County Commissioner District 2. And we just want to thank him for his service as mayor of Rowlett and wish him luck. And here he is, Todd Gutzel. Steve, I appreciate the introduction. Uh, let me let me tell you, just spend just a moment to talk about Steve Walker for just a second. You know, I'd like to first say, you know, welcome to our first response appreciation gala, but I don't want Steve to get away that easy. You know, Steve has been, and his organization, Rowlett Strong, is just an amazing, amazing group. They have stepped up in times when there were things were the absolute worst and said, what do we have to do to get involved and create an organization to help people? And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But, folks, we need to give Steve a standing ovation and his entire team. Before we begin, though, this evening, I'd like to introduce Dr. Bruce Hardgrave. I've had the pleasure of serving with Bruce on the Rowlett City Council, and Bruce is going to be doing our invocation tonight. So, Bruce, will you please come up? We join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm praying for police officers, firefighters, and other first responders who hold dangerous jobs where lives often hang in the balance and their dear sweet families are left behind to pray for them, encourage them, to love them, to sacrifice on their behalf and hopefully believe that you will send them home to them. Bless all of them. When they face danger, be their stronghold. When they feel inadequate, help them to do all things. When they're upset, Give them peace at all times and in every way. When they're exhausted, give them your strength. When they're overwhelmed, may your grace be sufficient for every need they can think of and have. When things seem impossible, remind them that nothing is too hard for you. When they don't know what to do, show them. When they're in trouble, be their ever-present help. When they're confused, give them a sound mind. When they're afraid, help them trust in you. When their heart grows faint, be their rock. Bring them through fire and flood that they may praise you. And bless our time together this evening. Bless our auction and fellowship. Bless our food to the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to your service. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I'd like to introduce, or what I'd like to do is have an opportunity for any of our elected officials here to stand at this time, please. As well as our school board as well. Can you please rise? So Rowlett Strong is an amazing organization, as I mentioned with Steve and his team. They picked up when things were at the absolute worst. 
And, and like so many, they said, what can we do to help out? What can we get involved? So Rowlett Strong was formed after the tornado, specifically to raise funds for the Rebuild Rowlett campaign that was formed, because we had so many folks with, that had lost so much. But now the recovery is near its end, and there are still those that are suffering, and there are still those that need help. But they have refocused, and they have shifted their focus in terms of recognizing the first responders and later we'll be creating programs to help Rowlett's youth to get them out of trouble. This is a great group that continually gives back. Folks like, um, and I'm going to get all the names, if I, if I forget one, this is, this is the worst part because there's so many in the, in the organization. But if I can ask that table to stand, Cheryl and Troy and the entire group there, if we can. Um, I will tell you, these folks are absolutely amazing. They, they opened the tornado recovery center, the relief center that was there, spent many, many hours doing that. We're gonna show you some of the amazing work that Troy did in just a little bit with the plaques, but they deserve a huge round of applause for all their effort and all their hard work. <laughs> we need to thank them for their service, but more importantly, they helped put together this gala tonight. This is, this is truly a grassroots this is not, this is a grassroots effort, this is not a city event. The first responders from all over helped Rowlett and the citizens, and they came back and said, we want to show the gratitude that was there. You know, when you go through a difficult time like this, there are people that you've never had an opportunity to meet that just show up. And there are so many times I've wondered myself and say, you know what, I wonder who that was. You wanted to go back afterward and shake their hand or give them a hug, and they weren't there to be able to do that. And as we went through, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later, but just the amazing, extraordinary response from so many, including all of the first responders. And so tonight is really a thank you and a true appreciation for all the hard work and effort that you guys contributed to help our cities. At this time, I'd like to introduce our state representatives. Cindy Burkett is here, and, and she would like to say a few words. Good evening. It's great to see y'all all here. Um, you know, I've really got to know the city of Rowlett very well, and it's a big family. And when a family member is in trouble, family steps in. They step in to help. When a neighbor's in hurting or in trouble, neighbors offer a helping hand. What happens when an entire community has been devastated? And that's what happened to Rowlett and the surrounding areas of Garland and Sunnyville. In our case, the men and women we're honoring here tonight answered the call. In the middle of the night, and for some in this room, perhaps the worst night they had ever experienced, complete strangers volunteered to help, as Todd said earlier. Now, I'm not going to give a long speech, drawn out speech, and I know y'all are happy to hear that because usually when a politician gets up in front of the microphone, people get a little nervous. But my only purpose for being here tonight is a simple thank you. Many of you here this evening have heard me talk before about community, about one of the most severe natural disasters experienced in North Texas, and how it gave our community the opportunity to shine. In the past year and a half, we've had rebuilding initiatives, and most of them put on by this organization. We've had fundraisers, we've had ceremonies honoring neighbors and friends, and even a dedication of a memorial. But tonight, we finally get to formally thank a group of individuals who showed up. Many of these folks weren't even from Rowlett, but they didn't hesitate to come out in the middle of the night and to offer their assistance. And I'll never forget that night when I was heading over to the county emergency headquarters and I drove past the Walmart on, Bro Walmart on Broadway and 30 in Garland. I couldn't believe it. When I saw the entire parking lot was filled with fire trucks, EMS vehicles, and police vehicles. And I understand from the chief that we had over 40 different cities who sent their first responders to help. That's really the Texas way. These people came not because they had to, but because it was the right thing to do. It was the neighborly thing to do. It was the Texas response that I have come to expect from the state that I live in and am very proud to represent. Now, Rolette has always been a strong, tight-knit community. On December 26, 2015, it became even stronger, even closer. But you also grew that night, because at least in my mind, the individuals we're honoring here this evening will forever be a part of our let. 
and I appreciate that you also allowed me to become a part of your community. And while we can never truly express our appreciation, I would like to add my voice to the chorus of others this evening by offering a simple thank you for showing up in our time of need. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you, Cindy. I would like to recognize Harold Evanson. He is the president of the National Sheriff's Association. Help you please rise. Thank you so much for being here. Today. I'd also like to take a moment to recognize someone who was in attendance with us this evening. This gentleman actually has to leave very shortly. But we are so honored tonight to have Texas Police Commissioner Rob Kiker with us this evening. Rob, uh, would you please come up? <laughs> Rob was appointed by the governor of Texas to serve as proudly, and he has proudly represented the governor of Texas Commission on Law Enforcement. And of course, he's there to, to help the families of our fallen officers across the state and in their most delicate times and working on their behalf in times of need. We are so honored to have you, Commissioner. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. A great group. And I'm reminded of the story about the mule that was entered in the Kentucky Derby. Y'all heard this? Well, I feel like the mule in the paddock with some of the most beautiful and expensive racehorses in the world. The media was there. Ladies with full hats, and that, I think it was an orange Julius. And they were sipping on those, and they came to the mule and said, Mule, what in the world are you doing entered in the Kentucky Derby? And the mule said, Well, I don't know. But I do know one thing. I sure love being in the company of good people. <laughs> That's how I feel tonight. Mayor, thank you for your kind words. And when you called and asked if I could be here tonight, I, I was kind of blown away and honored. It's always such a great honor to get to represent our great governor and our presiding officer, Sheriff Joel Richardson from Randall County. I know that Harold and Joe are very close friends. And, and Harold, if you would, please tell Joel that I did okay. Because uh, he is my boss. You know, tonight is about honoring the first responders and the team of the professionals that supported them. And we saw that night after Christmas in 2015 Tragedy can strike anytime, anywhere, without any warning. And the police in Raleigh and Garland and Dallas and neighboring communities throughout this part of North Texas came to help. They deserve our heartfelt thanks for what they did that night, and I would say, in fact, what they do each and every night. On 9-11, we saw thousands of first responders who had trained for literally 10,000s of hours, carrying hundreds of pounds of equipment up cramped and smoky staircases to a destiny of uncertainty, and never asked the question why. Randy, they didn't ever ask why, they just did. That's what first responders do. You see, we're the 26, 2015 was our version of 9-11. And our first responders from all across the great communities came. And they didn't ask why. They came. In scripture, it tells us in John chapter 15, verse 13, that greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friend. 
And I would say to you that night, those first responders went to the scene, not knowing yes or no if they would come back home to their wives or their husbands or their sons or their daughters or their friends or their loved ones because that's what they do. They respond. Mr. Mayor, your efforts that night to lead the team and all the things that happened placed you in the right place to be nominated as a finalist for Texan of the Year. And you know, Mr. Mayor, I know that perhaps you feel a calling to run for a higher office. And, you know, I, I guess the next step would be county commissioner, maybe judge, uh, governor, president. I don't know that we have a bigger office than president. But I know, based on what I saw that night, that this man right here can do the job. And as a citizen of Dallas County, I want you, sir, to know that I support you. And I want you to know, as a commissioner of the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, highest honor that I can bestow on any citizen in this great state is the Gold Shield Award. This Gold Shield Award. <laughs> on one side of this, it has the flag of the great state of Texas. Y'all all from Texas, ain't you? Texas? Amen, brother. On the other side is the great state of Texas, the greatest nation God has ever made, the state of Texas. It is my high honor and great personal privilege to present to our great mayor, Todd Gattel, this great honor. Sir, always so reassuring to see our first responders and I want you to know that we pray that God continues to bless all who serve to all of you who serve and to all of you that have served we say thank you to honor those who gave the last full measure of devotion. I challenge you here tonight to live your lives worthy of their sacrifice. It is our sacred honor and duty to first responders to serve those who first serve us. Please continue to serve our first responders and through you, God will continue to bless the greatest state this nation has ever known. Thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner. The plane does sound appealing, doesn't it? Think that Air Force One? <laughs> Just kidding. That's not the only perk. Well, let me tell you a little bit of my thoughts about December 26th. Yeah, I was home that night and something was just different that evening. I remember walking outside and the air was somewhat stale and it just, it didn't feel normal for December 26th. You know, the day after Christmas, kids are usually cool, you see them riding their bikes, it was just, 
it, it was just something different about it. And then we watched, I kept talking to Ed and over, over our Office of, Emergency Man Office of Emergency Management and saying, how are we doing, what's going on? And, um, and I know you're here somewhere, um, there he is. We, we could not have done it without you, my friend. Thank you. I will tell you that that night we were sitting there and Ed and I would communicate and I said, do you mean come down the EOC? No, I'm not sure. Well, the difference was that it was, the storm was not moving from the west to the east. It was moving from the south to the north. So it basically a little bit of an east, a west-east pattern, but moving from the south. And I, I knew at that point that we, we were in trouble. They kept drawing the cone. As they put the cone in there, watching the center of that line, I'm like, this is coming right through my neighborhood. But at that point, we were down in the skeet area, and it was kind of working its way up past Glen Heights. And at that point, you can think about just kind of praying for all those that are in the path. And I remember at home, I say to my daughter, you know, I say, I say, Abby, I said, come on, we need to get. I said, there's a storm coming. Of course, you know, she's 18 and knows absolutely everything, and I'm the dumbest person in the room. And I say to her, I say, come on, we need, oh, it's, and I, this is like the boy who cried wolf a thousand times, the storm's coming, we need to get to have stairs. And she really didn't want to believe me. And she said, well, I'm going to get a shower first. And I said, no, honey, you understand that we had a storm coming this way. And then she comes down and basically with no shoes on and, and shorts and sort of a towel sort of wrapped around. I'm like, she's going to go to the shower. I have to fix my hair up. I'm like, you don't understand. Where's your shoes? So we I threw her a pair of my tennis shoes and threw her in the bathroom with myself and and I, I kept waiting for the sirens to go off and stepped outside for just a minute because they said you can hear it coming if it's coming. And you heard that rumble and the roar. And shortly after that, I realized that we were not going to get impacted, my house specifically. And you don't know how much damage is actually done. The first thing my daughter said, well, see, I told you so. And, you know, I immediately got the call from Ed and team and said, we need you to come down. We get hit. Of course, it's dark and you really don't know how bad things are. And the route that I took was very fortunate that we didn't see any damage at all. I kept waiting to see some, but the route I took, we didn't have any. And I remember walking into the EOC with both chiefs there and talk about a well orchestrated machine, just, you know, with everything going on, the calls coming in, the 911 system getting essentially completely shut down, the overflow going into Dallas and people calling in panic of all the things that have happened. We're trying to put the addresses on the map and figure out what's going on. And, you realize at that point, you know, my mother always told us, she said, the real test of a character is when the chips are at the absolute worst. When things are at the absolute worst, that's when you see the real person. And in this case, the city of Allen really shined that night, as did the other cities. But it did because of all the support and all the efforts by every single person in this room and all those that couldn't be here this evening, because we could not have done it without you. First light was really tough because you go out that morning and we did the tour. And the damage was just amazing. I mean, just telephone poles snapped off like toothpicks, one after the other, and, and power lines all over the place, and gas lines that were open, and just, it was, it's more than most people could even fathom. It's one thing to see it on television sometimes. You see the helicopter fly by, and you go, oh, those poor folks are there, we're gonna pray for them. But it's another thing, and as mayor, you know, I've been really blessed because one of the things about living in a smaller city, I know it's 60,000 not so small, but you know a lot of people that are there. So it's more than just driving down a road. You drive by someone's house that you know, and you've been there. You celebrate with your children on birthdays and, 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 or been to graduation or retirement parties. So you know those individuals that are there. And I remember you know, looking at the devastation going, this, just can, this cannot be happening. This cannot be happening here. And I went to one lady and I said, you know, first of all, I'm so sorry. I said, but is there anything at all I can do for you? And she said, could I just have a hug? We think about that for just a second, because it says that the, when things are perhaps worse, it's all she wanted was just someone to say, it's going to be okay that we're here. And I, along with so many, made a real commitment that night and said, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to help those individuals that are there. Our council members stepped up and said, whatever we need to do, we're going to do. Our staff said, whatever we need to do, we're going to do to help those individuals. We have Whitney Lanning here with our CERT group, which we stand for just a moment. Whitney. Whitney heads up the, the top CERT organization in, in the state of Texas. He has been instrumental in putting these programs together. He is, he, he is of course, or he, the or, he and the organization are recognized statewide. And they have done an amazing job in putting together people. We have over 100 strong 
a, a hundred person strong team that's there that's trained in, in search and rescue. And we've been so blessed to have him in the city or LA. The fact that you can pick up the phone and call them and we activate them. They have everything to turn off the gas lines, to bring people to safety. And those folks are already in the neighborhood. So the minute they get the call, they immediately come out to help and support. Because as you can imagine, the storm of that magnitude, there's, you know, you don't have enough folks that are working that night. You can't get there fast enough. And even with our full support of all of our police and all of our fire and all of our public works, you just don't have enough people. Specifically in the city of LA, we lost over 1,100 homes were impacted. Over 500 of those suffered major catastrophic loss, which meant that they were structurally unsound or they simply collapsed. And you hear story after story of survival and he, I had one lady I talked to, and she said, you know, I panicked. She said, I happen to be in a hotel room, and I'm watching CNN, and my son is home by himself. And she said, I'm, I remember being on the phone trying to call him desperately, and I'm watching this, and Chad Myers said, well, this is where the storm's going. This is what's happening. And she said, I felt helpless because there's nothing that I could do. And she said, I remember calling, trying to get a hold of neighbors, and all of a sudden the phones just went dead. And I'm having to watch this unfold in my hotel room. Now imagine it's bad enough you're out of, out of town or, or this day out of state, but alone by yourself in the room. And she had a two-story home. And her son that was 17, I believe he's, I believe he's 17, happened to be smart enough. He crawled under. There was an L-shaped staircase in, the, in that two-story house. And when he walked back out and crawled back out of that staircase, that was the highest point in the house that was left. Go on. And home after home after home, and you had story after story of survival. And through those stories of survival, you had so many people that were heroes. It started with heroes in the local neighborhoods, people, the neighbors that were wow, and, and said, what can we do to help you? I know we've never met before, but that didn't make a difference that night. Bruce Hargrave along with Sammy Walker, they, they lived near one another. There was a gentleman that, that the house basically collapsed and, and the wall fell on him. Neil Heslop passed away um, from the tornado, but it was about two weeks after that. And I always said, you know, that, 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 was, that was the only loss the auto we had that evening, although there were many injured. And if you had, had to ask you, what, was there, why would that happen? And, and was there, was, you know, how did God play a role in this thing? And I think the gift that evening that Neil was given was the gift of time. Because Bruce and Sammy came in and they helped lift the wall off of, and for those of you who don't know, Sammy was a former Olympian and he was into the weights and stuff. And although Sammy's well older, Sammy's still very strong and, and, uh, and does a great job representing the city in many ways. And they pitched in and they lifted the wall off of Neil and they were able, along with the help of first responders, to get him loaded in the back of the truck, essentially, and get him to the hospital because you couldn't get down the streets. The power lines were down and the EMS was trying to get in as fast as they could. And Sammy said, I don't even remember driving to the hospital that night. What I remember is driving over, I don't even know what we drove over, but the all four tires were completely flat by the time we got to the hospital, driving across curbs and fields and doing whatever we could. And, and, and had they not gotten Neil out, they would have died in the house that night. And you know, and, and there were so many stories of, of survival, and there were so many heroes that, that were truly born that evening. And I'll tell you, you know, the amazing thing was, you really don't know who your friends are, so to speak, until something like that happens. And to be able to stand there and drive by the parking lot of, a, of, of one of the supermarkets there, and you see all of the first responders that are just poured out, as Cindy had mentioned, truck after truck, organization after organization, all the public works people, they were, they were like ants. I mean, it's just like you step on the fire ant man and they all just showed up. And you have no idea what that means. The hope that you provided that night for those to say, you are not alone. It is so critical. And, what, and the gift that you gave us that night is something that we will never forget. And I cannot thank you enough for, for everything that all of you did for our city. You know, one of the challenges as you go through this thing 
is you think about the magnitude of, of a storm of that size, and sometimes you'll see something, you know, it, it, it could be a small touch that you see a tornado that touches down, and maybe a building is ruined, and it, and it impacts individuals, but this impacted entire communities. Glen Heights, we had Sunnyvale, uh, Mesquite, uh, you know, I mean, all these areas along the way, Garland, Gralet, and, and you know, these are folks that, some didn't have insurance, and some, you know, were just trying to get by, and we had those that, some of that were in the apartments in Garland, that lost everything that night. And you know, do you think about having to start over at an instant? We all had to go just like that and said, okay, everything you have is completely gone and you have to start over that night. That is really hard to deal with. And, but it's the hope that's provided to them that allows them to help them move on. I remember all, you know, the Atmos folks and the Encore folks, and everyone played their role. And, and of course, our public safety officials, our police and fire departments were instrumental in, in helping to clean up these neighborhoods. Um, I'd also like to take an opportunity to recognize we cannot forget about our public works officials that are here tonight. If you, do we have any public works folks? Can you please stand? <laughs> they immediately went out and you see trucks from other cities caravanning in. It's really a cool thing, you know, to know that you have, that, that people have your back. And that is so critically important because you see the cleanup efforts that were done and the hours and hours and hours that those individuals spent. I mean, it's roadway after roadway, alley after alleyway, and, and, and what do you do with the debris? You think about that and all the help with the fire departments and police departments along the way, even after the initial first response, immediately after the touchdown, trying to direct traffic and close off streets because everybody wants to be... You know, they call, I think they call them Jesus a, a looky loo. Is that what you call them? He said they drive by and everybody wants to see what's going on. And you try to take some pictures, and you know, and, and it's hard because you're, you're trying to keep people safe in the area. And we had individuals that would come into that neighborhood and say, "I was just trying to find my way home, and I didn't recognize the street I was on because it changed that much." I'm proud to say, because of all the efforts and all the hard work, that we, you know, we still have some folks that are in the process of getting their lives back in order, but, but the majority, probably about 95% at, at this point, is cleaned up. And, and that, is a, that really has a lot to do with all the hard work and effort that you guys put in in the beginning. Because I've been to other areas, like New Orleans or other areas, after, after the storms that are in, and even sometimes a year later, they still look like nothing happened. And so it really is a testament to the, uh, to the hard work and everything that you guys have done. So I will tell you, you know, um, it, it really is just a remarkable thing when you see people work together. It says, it really tells you that with the help of God, anything is possible. And, and you know, and that night you really put your faith in God and, and, and thank him for all the gifts that you've received. But more importantly, thank him for all the gifts of you that showed up to help in that time of need. So with that, uh, they've asked me to mention a couple of things if I can. Uh, Sharon, or Sharon here, Screws here, she asked me to show you this t-shirt. If you guys are looking for a cool t-shirt, these are in the lobby for $10. They come in all different sizes and colors, so I encourage you if you're interested in doing that. If you guys are interested in looking a little bit stronger, just buy a size smaller. <laughs> and, uh, I don't do that, guys, trust me. I'm the before picture. All right, um, and we'd like to take an opportunity also, we've got a couple of door prizes. Do we have the drawing for the, for, for the door prize anywhere? Okay. All right, and Steve, do we have the drawing for the door prizes? All right, as they're getting that together, um, I want to take an opportunity to recognize some of our sponsors here this evening as well. We have, you know, going through the tornado, um, I cannot tell you the hundreds, if, if hundreds of hundreds of organizations and companies that stepped up. You know, one of the interesting things, I got a phone call immediately after, after the tornado, and, and Home Depot called me and said, Rich Arthur uh, called me from Home Depot and said, what can I do? Do you want me to stay open all night? That really shows you, it tells you a lot about the heart of the community and, and where it's at, and they did. Another one of those uh, special folks is Toyota of Rockwall. Do we have that? 
Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. See? Yeah, but let me, let, let me tell you a little about them. Their, de their whole dealership has taken, they've been instrumental in the recovery process. The dealership has taken on the attitude of using the marketing dollars to help communities they serve rather than spending that money on loud, obnoxious television advertising. And as a community, the city of Rowlett really appreciates the desire to help the organizations and to recognize all of those that uh, were impacted by that evening. So we have a special um, we have a special drawing uh, that we're going to be doing right now for them, and and we're pick the first door prize. Steve, Ken, this is for hold on, we get that here. This is for a twenty five dollar AMC gift card, and the winner is three four six five zero oh, two. I won. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have 346502. Steve, Steven, I'll get one more door prize from you in just a second. Okay. This one's going to be for El Phoenix here, and this is a $25 gift card as well. This is three, three, four, six, four, nine, three. Three, four, six, four, nine, three. There we go. I also want to take an opportunity to recognize some of our other, other sponsors. We have a silent auction sponsor, which is Southern Pride Openings. Yes, we have some here. Very good. Thank, thank you for being here this evening. It's a rally based company that has been involved in so many fundraisers and other events that they've conducted over the last 19 months to help with the recovery of Rowlett. It's an awesome family-owned company that provides quality product and service at a very affordable price and ensures that Rowlett residents need to look no further when they're wanting to update their homes with some awesome new doors and windows. Of course, they serve the entire Metroplex, not just Rowlett, but we're very proud to have them in our town. So thank you so much for being here. Another one of my friends that I cannot, um, I tell you, I don't know what we would do without them. They continually give back and give back into the community. And that evening uh, when, the, when the tornado hit, our friends at Baylor, Scott, and White were, were, just had a huge impact on our, on our community. There were so many times. <laughs> Where's the Baylor, Scott, and White team? Oh, there we are. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I will tell you that you know they are a title sponsor of this event, and uh, they they opened up several different outposts or relief centers. One of the things I got inundated after the tornado and realized that everybody was coming in because it, it, it just happened. And shortly after that, we we, we had a couple different sites that were open. I, I remember going to one of the churches that were there and they said it didn't make a difference had insurance or not. You get know, tetanus shots and other basic things that were there. If you know you just show up and you people walk in and say I stepped on a rusty nail or or I cut my arm and they would immediately have someone that's qualified to help look at that and, and you know played a very, very important role, not just during that tornado area, but during our cleanup effort well so I, as well. So I cannot thank you enough for everything. We are extremely grateful to have Baylor Scott and White as again as a primary sponsor this evening, and they truly know. They truly know the value of paying it forward, which is a, which is really what this event is all about. And Adriana Vasquez, if you're here, uh, you're here. I'm sorry, if you want to, if, if you can please come up, because I'd like to have you to say a few words. That would be that would be great. Thank y'all so much. So my name is Adrienne Vasquez. I'm the director of rehab at Baylor Scott and White. And you know, I came from a very small town, South Texas by Corpus. And this town, for me and my family, reminded me of home. By the water, um, fresh water, not salt water, but still by the water. And um, you know, I raised my kids here. We actually lived in Rowlett the night that this happened. And um, we were driving into town after it had all hit. 
And you know, without the team that sits in front of me, there's no way that we could have helped the community as much as we needed to. And without everybody in the room, we couldn't have done it without y'all. So I drove in and it was really black. There's nothing you could see, just as Mayor said, and you couldn't really see the impact until the next morning. So when I woke up, I went straight to the hospital to see if anybody needed help. And um, you know, my rehab was destroyed across the street from the hospital, but by the grace of God, the hospital wasn't. The hospital was fine. We were on the backup generator. We were one of the only places in the town that actually had power. So people were in the neighborhood that could see that we had lights and air conditioning and things that we sometimes take for granted, we actually had it. So the team at the hospital had to really focus on organizational efforts to get people in the community to where they needed to be to get those amenities. Um, and you know, we were really grateful that we get to serve this community. Um, we're grateful that y'all come to us for your care and trust us with your care. And we'll continue to serve y'all in the, um, the next years to come. So thank you so much for everything y'all did that night. It impacted me personally as somebody in the community, but it also impacted us as a hospital care team that truly cares about everyone in this room and also everybody living um, in the community that help us be as great as we are. So thank y'all so much for everything you did and um, we will continue to be strong in the community for y'all. Before I introduce our, our keynote speaker this evening, I want to mention that we're going to have a surprise live auction on several items after our guest speaker. One of those items will be a, a timeshare condo donated by the Hargrave, uh, the Hargrave of Memorial Trust and Bruce Hargrave is the trustee. It will receive a, five, a free five night one, stay in a one bedroom condo anywhere in the world. As a matter of fact, I'm not trying to commit you Bruce, but it says that there's two of these down here. So I hope that's right. So we're good. <laughs> All right, so at this time, I'd like to introduce our, our guest speaker. And our guest speaker this evening is Chris Summer. Chris is the afternoon news anchor. Chris is the afternoon news anchor on 1080 KRLD in Dallas. KRLD is one of the primary ways that Rowlett residents were getting their weather information on that fateful evening. Since, it, as just mentioned, the power was out, and of course, you know, and a lot of the cell towers were not working at that time. Chris joined KR, KRLD in 2012, but many will remember him from the very successful Harmon and Evans morning show on 99.5 KPLEX in the 90s. He has interviewed a diverse range of figures from Queen Elizabeth II to Garth Brooks. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? <laughs> so, at this time, if you can help me please welcome Chris Summer. Thank you, and good evening. Actually, one of the greatest thrills is when you'll run into somebody who's been out in this area for a long, long time, who remembers Garth Brooks playing Southern Junction back in the late 80s. Anybody remember that? Matter of fact, my wife and I, last month, we were married 20 years, and she can remember Going out to Southern Junction, 1989, 1990, before Garth got really big, he'd bring his guitar out on the dance floor, and everybody's dancing around, and here comes Garth. Cool memories. And as I'm listening to those who have already spoken tonight, it just made me think, isn't it wonderful, and aren't we blessed to be here together tonight in a room that is so filled with gratitude. Isn't that a wonderful feeling? The message that I would like to share with you tonight can be summed up in basically four words. As you've already heard from a lot of the other speakers, including the mayor, two of those words are thank you. And the other two words are you first. We are here tonight to express gratitude 
to the dozens of cities and agencies who stepped up to help the good people of Rowlett after the horrible events of December 26, 2015. The first responders from all those cities and agencies had one message for those who were in a, such a desperate time of need. They said, your needs are more important than anything else, and we are here to help. They said, you first, what can we do? They came, they answered the call, not because they had to, not because it was their job, they did it because it is who they are. I thank God for people like that. And I hope that tonight we are not just here to say thank you to these heroes, but I hope we will also walk out inspired by them and that we will incorporate more you first moments into our own daily lives. Back in 1986, author Robert Fulgham published the poem known as All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Anybody remember that? I've done a lot of events with educators over the years, and I like to share this poem when I speak with teachers. The message of the poem is about sharing and being kind and considerate toward others. It's about taking responsibility in our own daily lives. Without exception, when the audience gets that simple reminder about these basic life rules we learn as small children, you see heads in the audience start to nod in unison as if to say, you know what, that is so true. Hearing those basic rules makes us take a silent self-inventory of how good a job we are doing at following the tenets of life. They always take me back to childhood and kindergarten in my hometown in South Texas back in the early 1970s. I think one reason I have so much respect for law enforcement, my great-grandfather was a deputy sheriff in South Texas. And to a four or five-year-old boy, he was larger than life, just like a lot of you in this room tonight. Larger than life to a lot of people. My parents and grandparents taught me to be polite, to respect my elders, and always respect law enforcement. I, like a lot of others, was taught to put others first. You first was a message instilled in me from a very young age. And I'll be the first to admit, I have days when I stumble. There's days I'm on 35 driving into Dallas to go to the radio station. I'd like to tear somebody's head off. I'll be real honest with you. But I always try to honor my parents and grandparents by reminding myself of those two important words, you first. I want you to think for a moment about what our society would be like without our first responders, without our police officers, who put their lives on the line on a daily basis. Without the firefighters who run straight into burning buildings to save lives. Without the EMTs and paramedics who use their quick thinking and extraordinary skills to give others a chance at life. They all do it for us. They put us first, and many times, they don't get the gratitude they deserve. Maybe it's time, once again, 
we tell them how much we appreciate them. You know, I turned 50 last year, and I was part of the first generation to see computers incorporated into education. As a broadcaster, technology makes my job a lot easier. I started on radio in 1983, 16 years old in my hometown in South Texas. It was a teeny tiny AM radio station on the courthouse square. One of my teachers got me a job interview at the local radio station. We actually played records on the radio. You wanted to make a request, you had to call on the telephone. Things have changed a lot in the last 34 years. And even though technology has made life a lot easier for a lot of us, in some cases, it's also taken us down a dangerous road. There are too many in our society who are now driven by and hooked on social media. For too many who spend too many hours on outlets like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the credo has become me first. I have a smartphone. You can't see my face. And here's what I think. If you don't like it, too bad. That makes you my enemy. In my opinion, the anonymity and lack of true human interaction on social media is kind of what makes it so void of compassion and decency. I think great Texas cities like Rowlett, the great state of Texas, and this great nation of ours, were they built on basic things like compassion and decency and humanity? Too many times in this social media driven generation, the mentality of you first gets lost in the shuffle. Kindness and caring get shouted down by anger and vitriol, and I think that's wrong. I'm so flattered and honored to have my wife Brenda here with me tonight. She and I are regular viewers of the A&E show, Live PD. You guys seen Live PD? Ever watch it? For three hours each Friday and Saturday night, the program follows several law enforcement agencies around the country. One of the reasons I love Live PD, I think a lot of people are quick to spout off about law enforcement, never having seen firsthand what you do, not being there to see what you put up with on a regular basis. And that's what I like about Live PD. They take you around the country and you are there live with these officers, with these deputies as they go out and patrol on Friday and Saturday nights. One week ago tonight, we were watching a deputy in South Carolina was involved in a high-speed pursuit with a suspect. The wanted man, after leading the chase at speeds over 100 miles an hour, ended up losing control of his vehicle, which flipped onto his top. As the pursuing deputy from South Carolina rushed in to try to apprehend the suspect, the guy came out of a window holding his toddler. This was a child no older than three years old with that little girl dangling from one arm. The suspect continued to fight the deputy with no concern for the well-being of his own child. 
Thankfully, in large part to the quick thinking of that deputy, the little girl was safely removed from the scuffle. But the man still continued to fight the deputy, who was on his own at that point. Backup had yet to arrive. A crowd quickly lined the street. And again, let me remind you, this is all on live national television. You had a crowd lined up on the street watching a deputy scuffle in the street with this guy. Not a single person stepped in to help the law enforcement officer. Now, a lot of the bystanders had their cell phones out. They were rolling video, but nobody came to the assistance of the deputy. No one at that scene said, you first to that great deputy. Now, thankfully, that deputy escaped a life-endangering situation unhurt. But to me, this was a shocking example of how often we look out for ourselves over others. It takes so little effort to make a real difference every single day. How easy is it to hold a door for someone and say, you first. I think a lot of us were taught to do it. We don't always remember to do it. How much effort does it take to make eye contact with a stranger and smile and say hello? As my 17-year-old daughter likes to say, and Mayor, I know what you mean. They know everything. But a lot of times they'll say things that really make you proud. She likes to say, show someone a kindness. It might be the only kindness they see the entire day. And it might just turn their whole day around. Pay it forward. Wave at a neighbor. Let that driver in on the freeway. Tell your significant other how much you love and appreciate them today. Put somebody else first and see how good it feels. One thing I noticed recently when there was that awful incident at the congressional baseball practice and one of the congressmen shot and wounded. And when there's an incident like that, for a few hours, you tend to see people banding together. And we have unity. And then our differences start to divide us. And a couple of days later, it's like nothing ever happened. That's where I think the community of Rowlett is such a great example for the rest of us. It's been 19 months since that awful night. But listen to the mayor. Listen to people like Steve Walker, who have seen terrible things during this recovery, only to see a brighter outlook. I think we can learn a lot from the community of Rowlett. I think we can learn unity, banding together, appreciating one another. How great could it be if we could just be kind and considerate and respectful every day and lay a foundation for future generations to follow? Again, I've known Steve Walker a long time. He likes to say that his city has an outstanding police department, an outstanding fire department, and an outstanding Office of Emergency Management that is prepared for just about anything. But when the tornado hit Rowlett on that night after Christmas in 2015, the sheer destruction was just too much. However, they were so blessed to have the assistance of all the agencies represented in this room tonight. Those great Texans who saw a great need and so selflessly stepped up to help. 
Think what Raul at first. And with your support tonight, Rowlett will have the resources to return the favor when another community is suffering. As we thank these first responders tonight, let us also go out and honor them by following their example of service. Try to have at least one you first moment every day. You'll be better for it. The people you touch in a positive way will be better for it. And our communities will also be better for it. Before I wrap up, if you don't mind, I'd like to take two minutes. We talked about the poem, All I Ever Need to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten. I'd like to share that with you. Most of what I really need to know about how to live and what to do and how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but there in the sand pile at Sunday school. These are the things I learned. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. And of course, the next one has to be flush. Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Live a balanced life, learn some, and think some, and draw, and paint, and sing, and dance, and play, and work every day, some. I can appreciate this next one because I did morning radio for nearly 20 years. Take a nap every afternoon. <laughs> when you go out into the world, Watch out for traffic, hold hands, and stick together, and always be aware of wonder. I'd really like to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. I thank you for your attention, and I thank you for your gratitude. Your gratitude for all these amazing people Police, firefighters, paramedics, public works. I'd like to say thank you to you for you thanking them. May God bless those in Rowlett who continue to recover after the awful night 19 months ago. May God bless our first responders and organizations like Roundlet Strong, who always put others first. May God bless your mayor. I know you guys are going to miss him. I think you're going to see him in elected office again. That's just me. And I think Dallas County would be better for it. But that's just me. Mayor, thank you for your leadership and for everything you have done for your community since that night, 19 months ago. Above all, may God bless this great state of Texas and great communities like Rowlett. May God bless each of you and thank you for coming out tonight to say thank you. God bless. so much for your inspiring speech. You know, I thought of something during that during during your speech that 
kind of really hit home. You know, I told you about the story of my daughter, and she didn't think it was real. Well, one of her friends happened to be in the impacted area, and a few days after it occurred, they allowed her and her, and her friends to get back in to try to pick up what was left that was there. And you know, it, it changes so many lives, it changes so many people, it changes so many hearts. And, and uh, what's amazing to me, it, it really hit home that day, and in, in many ways, she graduated, meaning that she learned a lot, a lot of what compassion was about and, and what, how something like that storm could really impact so many people. She has really taken it upon herself to kind of pay it forward, so to speak. And she said to me the other day, she goes, you know, Dad, I was out, and we baked a whole bunch of cookies, and we put them with a bottle of water, we tied them together and put a little scripture on it, and we were out and handing, handing them out to some of the homeless people that, that we saw. Um, she's, out, she's in school and over college, and she said we went out as a group and we handed them out. That's not something I prompted her to do, and to hear her say that really warms her heart. And a lot of it had to do with she told me about the tornado and said, you know, it really changed my life that day. And she said, I want to be able to kind of give back because I saw how my friends were impacted and lost everything. And a lot of these did folks did as well. So, all right. A um, couple things. You guys all get your photos. I have the beautiful Melissa with me this evening. Melissa, thank you so much for being here. I've known Melissa about 15 years now and had an opportunity to work with her. Thank you for blessing me this evening. Um, we also want to thank Anita Gogol. Is Anita here? Anita is responsible for these wonderful photos. We did give her a big round of applause. I will tell you that um, you know she's a councilwoman in, for for the city of Garland, and uh, and we want to say thank you so much for for that because it's really nice to have a, a token of this evening. I don't. Can I take? Can we look at those other the one the. The, the other plaques for just a moment. I want to take an opportunity um, to recognize Troy Cox. Troy, you're here? I saw you here somewhere. Troy Cox? All right. Well, Troy is here somewhere. What's that? He stepped out. Perfect timing. Well, I want to say thank you very much. Well, I, we're going to be handing these out in just a moment, but I want you to have an opportunity to see these. Uh, Troy is an amazing individual. Uh, he, is, he has crafted these plaques from wood that was in the tornado. And and I'll tell you, there were so many times, absolutely, you can absolutely <laughs> there He would go out and he'd collect the debris and he'd say, what are you gonna do with the debris? He goes, well, I wanna make something out of it because people wanted to have a symbol or something to remind them. And, and so when we hand these out tonight, these really have an extra special meaning. So we call your name or, or your um, organization, if you can please come up. But hopefully these will be displayed in your office or a very prominent spot in the station. And again, we want to say thank you so much to our first responders for, for all that you have done for us this evening. So if I, when I call your name, if I can hand, if you can just please come up so we can give you um, these, cert these certificate and plaques, I would greatly appreciate it. The first one goes to the Rowlett Public Works Department. Yeah. You know, I love these guys. Rain, sleet, snow, shine, it's like being at the post office in the sense that they're always there. And they're, they, a lot of what you see in the public works in general just goes unseen. So all of a sudden, you've got that water main break at two o'clock in the morning. Of course, we're asleep, and they're out there digging the trench and picking things up and trying to get it back in order so when you get up at five or six, nothing's interrupted in your life. And we really appreciate all the hard work and effort that you guys do. It's very, very much appreciated. Our next one goes to our Rowlett Office of Emergency Management. Just say thank you, Ed. <laughs> Ed's the guy behind the scenes that I always call and say, what's the weather gonna be like? So, um, but seriously, they, they are just an amazing organization and kind of the man behind the curtain, so to speak, he does an amazing job for our organization. And of course, we, can, we cannot forget uh, all of the volunteers, literally thousands that have helped out, but we have a very special group called CERT, Community Emergency Response Team, and would like to, um, if you could, Whitney, just come up and accept that call. Okay. 
We have someone here from Rockwall County Office of Emergency Management. such an important role in the recovery of our communities. We cannot thank you enough. We have Rockwall Office of Emergency Management. I'll make sure that that gets to Rockwall. For our Richardson Public Works. We have Richardson's Office of Emergency Management. Right here. Right here. Of course, we did not forget the Red Cross. <laughs> Anytime the call comes, you guys always show up, and we thank you very much for that. It's very, very much appreciated. Saxe, Office of Emergency Management. Anyone from Saxe here? Okay. South Lake, Office of Emergency Management. And from the city of Garland, do we have some folks here from Garland? University Park Public Works. Wiley Office of Emergency Management. North Texas Council of Governments Emergency Preparedness. Too is another amazing organization of individuals. Thank you very much. We have Plano Office of Emergency Management. Plano Public Works. We have Allen Public Works. Public Works. Now I'll tell you, when I talked about the caravan, all these cities were named, and this is just a small number, of, but they, it literally was a caravan of individuals. Truck after truck after truck came in, and, and the cleanup efforts were monumental. I think we had 200, I'm probably going to get the number wrong, 200,000 tons, Chief, is that right, of debris? I mean, you think about, or 200,000 cubic yards or something. It was, I mean, it's an enormous, enormous thing. We, we placed a lot of debris next to the water tower and we shred, and it formed a huge mountain. And people said, I can't, and that was just a small portion of what was picked up. And in addition to that, there, there was even more debris on, on, of course, private property that was done. It was just a monumental effort. Carrollton Public Works. Chickasaw, Oklahoma Public Works. Our friends from Dallas County here this evening. We have Dallas County HSEM. We have Dallas Office of Emergency Management.
Dallas Public Works. We have Denton Public Works. Euless Public Works. Farmers Branch, Office of Emergency Management. Farmers Branch Public Works. You know, you keep hearing the names, you, you think, is there any more, is there any more? You know, you, you hear, if I've, I've often said it takes a village. Well, it truly has taken a village of all of these folks to be able to help us out. Fort Worth Public Works. Frisco Public Works. Grand Prairie Office of Emergency Management. Grand Prairie Public Works. Just come on back in. <laughs> Grapevine, Office of Emergency Management. We'll give that one to Grand Prairie too, it's close enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Keller, Keller Public Works. Well, I guess Keller Public Works. We have Louisville, Office of Emergency Management. Little Elm Public Works. Mesquite Public Works. I'm telling you folks, these men and women that showed up were just absolutely incredible at all different levels. You know, when you, when you see the amount of devastation that we had, and everything that, that these individuals did, there's no way that we could have recovered the way that we did without all the help and, and assistance. And I will tell you, not just as mayor, but as on behalf of our whole city, that should anything you ever need us, we will be there for you. I promise you that. All right, these next ones are the plaques that are made of the tornado debris. Is Troy back yet? Guys, for the. the on your handiwork, but you were out of, I get it, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, our first one goes to uh, American Medical Response. Are you here this evening? If not, we'll make sure that you guys get that. Addison Police Department. College Mound Volunteer Fire Department. <laughs> Carrollton Fire Department. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dallas County Sheriff's Department. <laughs> Dallas Fire Rescue Department.
you know, it was amazing the, the comments that I got from so many citizens that, that evening and, and, and weeks afterward. They, they would call us, or I'd run into some this in the streets, walking through the streets or in a restaurant, and they'd say, I'm amazed at the response. And I said, you need to thank all of the cities that were involved. I said, we've got amazing staff and organization, and I love our folks. But I said, we could not have done it without the help of all those individuals over there. You know, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, it takes a village. It takes a lot of people putting their effort together. And, you know, to have the resources available to us really made the cleanup easier. Farmers Branch Fire Department. <laughs> Forney Fire Department. Allen Police Department. Bold Springs Fire Department. I think they want me to drop some of these. You can't have up words right there. All right, let me see. What's that? Mean? All right. Uh, and then Care Flight. Fire, excuse me, Heat Department of Public Safety. Thank you. Mesquite Fire Department. Richardson Fire Department. We have Richardson Police Department. And then we have Murphy Fire Department. Payne Springs Volunteer Fire and Rescue. Plano Police Department. Rockwell County Sheriff's Department. We have Rockwell Fire Department. <laughs> These next couple are very special to me. Um, I am so proud and honored to be serving for the mayor, or as the mayor of the city of Rowlett, but. Well, one of the things that I always brag about is the great quality of our employees that we have. And you could not get a better group of men and women that, that serve our city. I have a tremendous amount of respect for both our police and fire departments. And, and both of these chiefs have, a, and, and of course, all those that work with the department have a very special place in my heart. The first, the first one is our Relic Police Department. Chief <laughs> Chief Howard. You know, when you work with folks as long as they have, I've been there for 10 years, and just you get to know the individuals personally, and it's no longer a department. They're, they're people, they're friends, they're family, and really cannot thank you guys enough for everything that you do. Royce City Fire Department. Thank you, gentlemen. 
Saxe Fire Rescue Department. I'll take a picture of that and send it to Mayor Felix. Terrell Fire Department. Texas Department of Public Safety. Texas Task Force One. Texas Task Force Two. Yeah, I'll tell you, the state of Texas played such a significant role in the help with our cleanup efforts. We were continually on the phone with them, and we really um, have a special, you always have a special place in our heart, but I'll tell you that one of the most important folks that played a very active role was our state representative, Cindy Burkett. She continually. <laughs> we spent a lot of time together, and uh, just in the days and weeks after, and every time we needed something, she'd say, I'll get a hold of the governor, I'll get the governor's office on the phone, and you were really instrumental in helping us, and to help coordinate a lot of the efforts. Because you know, when you think about the size of Texas and all the departments, the number of people you have to interact with, you really need that liaison. So in a lot of ways, you know, Cindy became that liaison for us to help us in a very critical moment. Trenton Volunteer Fire Department. Wiley Fire and Rescue Department. Massahatchee <laughs> Police Association. Great. So that, that concludes all of our, um, and then all of our plaques this evening. Uh, Troy, thank you very much for the beautiful work. It's excellent, excellent job. A few more things, we're going to get off to the games. We're going to do another door prize. If I can grab that food. Would you be able to draw one for me? That's great. This one is for a $25 El Phoenix gift card. And the winner on that is 346553. 346553. Three, four, six, five, five, three, last call. That's a twenty-five dollar gift card from El Phoenix, you know. Okay. Oh, rip up, see, okay. We have another gift card too, so. Oh. Three, four, six, oh. Did she get it? Wonderful. Tell her congratulations. There we go. All right. Okay, our next one. We've got Dickie's Barbecue Pit. Vouchers go for $50 at, at Dickie's Barbecue Pit in Rowlett. And that is 346489. 346489. Congratulations. No, we're going to do tell them just, just one minute. Okay, perfect. All right. At this time, we're going to um, introduce Bart Seegers. Bart, why don't you come on up? And you're going to be doing a couple of live auction items. And immediately after that, we're going to, we're going to um, go to the casino. Bart, let's turn it over to you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. 
on behalf of the, uh, the sponsors here, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, participate with you this evening. This was sort of a last minute uh, decision to offer some items in the live auction. And you should have a sheet of paper like this on your table. And it kind of details some of the things. We have a trip to San Antonio, we've got two timeshares, and then we have a surprise package, which is a gun club membership, a lifetime membership, actually. Uh, how many of you have never been to an auction before? Raise your hand, let me see real quick. How, how many have never attended an auction? Not very many. Keep your hands up, I'll tell you what you bought and how much you paid for it. <laughs> This is a benefit. We're here to do everything we can to raise the most money we can. And that's why I ask you to participate. And I appreciate every one of you being here. And uh, as a 21-year resident of Rowlett, I don't get an opportunity very often to see the mayor and our state representative in the same room. And I'd like to thank them for all the work that they did during the, uh, uh, the tornado and then all the work that they've done other than that, everything that they've done for the city and for the state of Texas. I appreciate it. Without further ado, because I'm not going to stand up and give a lot of speeches and talk to you because we've, we've been doing that, we're going to go into the fun and games here in a minute. But we're going to auction off. The first thing we're going to sell is a San Antonio trip package. And in this package, you get two one-day SeaWorld passes. There's two round-trip airline tickets on Southwest Airlines and two nights at the Grand Hyatt Hotel. Uh, you get to stay there for two nights. The retail value of this package is $1,500. And it's not where we stop, start that counts. It's where we stop. And I have $250 to start me off, and let's go. Who give me $300 to bid in this run? I have $250, now $300, $300, $400, $500, $200, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300, $300,
Now to the nine and a half. I have nine hundred dollars bid. Nine fifty. Thank you. Now thousand dollars bid. Nine fifty from a thousand. We're almost there. Nine. Don't shake your head no at me. Nine fifty from a thousand dollars bid. Nine fifty. Say a thousand dollars. Come on. Nine fifty. One thousand. Last call and I'm gonna go. I have nine hundred and fifty dollars. A thousand dollars to go anywhere in the world. One thousand dollars. Thank you. Now thousand and fifty. A thousand and fifty. Now eleven hundred dollars bid. Thousand fifty. Put up eleven. Eleven. Don't shake your head no at me yet. Eleven hundred dollars bid. I have a thousand fifty. Do eleven. Say eleven hundred dollars one time. Last call and I'm gonna go. Going once, I have a thousand and fifty right there, eleven hundred dollars anywhere. A thousand and fifty, eleven hundred, going twice. I sold it for a thousand and fifty dollars right over there. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you. But we had the opportunity to do it again. So would you like to start me off with a thousand dollars bid and let's go? Or do you want to play with me for a little bit? <laughs> I have a thousand dollars, thank you. Now a thousand fifty. I have a thousand of a thousand and fifty dollars in the bottom of a thousand and fifty dollars anywhere. A thousand of a thousand and fifty. A thousand of a thousand and fifty. Come on, a thousand and fifty dollars bid. A thousand of a thousand and fifty. One thousand of a thousand and fifty. You've got to go. I have a thousand dollars bid. One thousand and fifty dollars to travel anywhere in the world and have a place to stay. Australia, New Zealand. Jim? Thousand fifty, thank you. Now eleven hundred dollars. Where? I have a thousand dollars fifty. Now eleven hundred dollars. Over the bottom, give me eleven and don't stay with me. Eleven hundred dollars. Now eleven and a half. Eleven from eleven and a half. Eleven from eleven and a half. Y'all can do good out in a minute. Eleven from eleven and a half. Eleven hundred dollars be at eleven fifty. What? Eleven hundred fifty dollars. It's anywhere in the world. It's anywhere in the world. I have a thousand. Eleven. Now eleven fifty. Eleven hundred from eleven hundred fifty dollars be at eleven from eleven fifty. Last call. I'm gonna go. I have eleven hundred going once. You saying 1150? Where are they? I have, a, I have 1100. I'm asking for $1,150. I have 1150. One time. 1150. Now $1,200. Thank you. 1150. Now $1,200. Back to you. Don't let her do that to you. I have 1150. Now $1,200. 1150 not 12. She just kind of went like that. 1150 not 12. $1,200 more to buy me. She said $1,200. I got to go. I have 1150 not $1,200. They want to play casino. I have 1150 not $1,200. Last call? $1,200. Thank you. Not $1,200. $1,200. $1,200. We got a game going now. $1,200. $1,200. $1,200. You can take her with you. I tell you, how about that? 1250 Four of you can go or stay. I have 12, 12 and a half, 12 and a half, 12 and a half. Last call and I'm down. I'm going once, $1,200, 12 and a half. It's going twice, $1,200, 12 and a half. Are you through? I sold it to her for $1,200 right there. I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a really, really, really good call. But now we're, at, we're up to the last item that's up for bid. And this is a really unusual item, and, it's, and it comes with some... It comes with some hitches. This is a very exclusive surprise package from the Rockwall Gun Club. It's one of three exclusive private shooting experience with a country club environment. Now there's a little bag over there, a little shirt, there's a little koozie and some things like that that come along with it, but you get a, it's, it's a lifetime membership to the Rockwall Gun Club. Lifetime membership. This is a $3,000 value for a lifetime membership. It comes with one little hitch. You got $100 a month dues. To be a member, you got to pay $100 a month. I know. But you don't have to pay $3,000. You could. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. But talk to me. What are you going to get for it? And again, last, this is our last item up for bid. And it's not where we start. It's where we stop. That's what counts. And I have $500. Now $600 where? I have five of those $600. You say $600 bid. Five of a six. You say $600. What about my guy to go? Five of a five and a half. Five of a five and a half. Five of a five and a half. You say five and a half? I have five hundred dollars bid five and a half. Come on! Not everybody at once. I have five of a five and a half. Anyway, I have five hundred dollars bid five and a half. Five of a five and a half. I know you police officers will get to shoot anywhere you want. But five of a five and a half. Five of a five and a half. Come on! Talk to me. Not everybody at once. Who give me five hundred and fifty dollars? A three thousand dollar membership. You have it. I have. You saying you're saying five and a half? Oh, okay. Thank you. 
have five and a half. Just yell it out there at me if I don't see it. I'm looking over here and you want to be able to just yell. Hey. She's going to go learn how to shoot. I'd be very careful if I was you. <laughs> I have five and a half. Now six hundred dollars bid. Five and a half would be six hundred dollars. Where would be six hundred dollars? Can you do it? Five and a half would be six hundred dollars. Get it? Come on. Five and a half would be six hundred. Five and a half, six hundred dollars. Last call, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna let her have this. Five and a half would be six hundred dollars bid going once. Five and a half, six hundred dollars going twice. Anybody care to raise it? Five and a half, six hundred. I sold it for five hundred and fifty dollars right back there. And I appreciate it very much. Thank you for inviting me out. Thanks. All right. All right, you guys ready to have some fun? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the casino at this time. I'd encourage you to stop by the silent auction. If you haven't already, they have some amazing um, items on there. there. There's a Glock. I'm looking on the sheet, but they told me there's a Glock over there that's on the silent auction. We have the SNU football. We've got some Rangers tickets and a host of other items there. So please stop by. The bar is still open. And enjoy the casino. Make sure you save your vouchers at the end, please, because we're going to be giving out some prizes. Thank you. Yes, and the shirts. Sorry, shirts. Don't forget the shirts. Thank you. Yeah. 